David Corton is here with us. Um, David, we were we were talking about about uh, you know essentially creating an egalitarian world, and and I you know I was saying you know this is not impossible. Humans have done it before. You want to riff on that a little bit? Your thoughts on that? Yeah, I mean it, it starts of course with recognizing that we have absolutely no future uh, if we stick with the economic system and the arrangements of power that we currently have that put the power in the hands of corporations and and essentially in the hands of psychopaths individuals who have set aside all uh, human and natural interests to maximize the growth of their personal financial assets all in line with this perverse um, economic theory that we call neoliberalism um, that would have us believe that money is wealth and growing money creates wealth and uh, is good for everyone. Right. Now, um, the, the fundamental thing is let us get really clear what it is that we really want. We want a society in which everyone has uh, whatever they need in terms of employment. Uh, now, this also recognizes that labor is essential to life, so it's not that we're going to do away with the need to labor, the need for jobs, or the need for work, but that we need to organize around work that is productive, and we need to put channel the rewards to people who are concerned, serving the community, helping one another. Um, so how do we do that at the level of policy? The, the starting point is is the conversation. I mean, first of all, we've got to really openly recognize that we are on a path to common self-extinction and there are no winners on a dead earth. That, you know, that's just the absolute foundation. Now, um, you know, part of our problem is that that is, that is a reality that is too frightening even to discuss. Mm -hmm. So we tend to shy away from it. Um, now, I think the way around that is recognizing that it's, you know, it's, it's not just the threat, but it is a possibility that if we, if we embrace the reality of the threat, that recognizes that the, the current institutions are not working, the current culture doesn't work, that we have to give that up. And that opens the way to opportunities for extraordinary creativity. Now, whether, whether we can actually pull this off is another question. Um, you know, if you ask me, what is my rational prediction of what's going to happen? Uh, you know, I think we're already too late. But I also recognize that if we make that our assumption, that becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. Right. So the You're only, talking with regard to the environment? With regard to the environment, exactly. Um, that, you know, we're going to continue to pollute the air to d d destroy right. our water supplies, etc. We'll kill ourselves off. Kill ourselves off, yeah. Um, Self-extinction. Um, so, but once we, once we embrace that, which, uh, you, you know, I find when I go around and speak to people and I ask how many people are aware that we're on a path to self-extinction, at least everybody in the rooms I speak to raises their hand. I mean, this is yeah. not... Uh, this is not a secret. We were talking about how if, if we don't wake up from this dysfunctional story that the world is unlimited, we can pollute forever, and, and capital is the beginning and end of all things, basically, that we're doomed. That we're, I mean, you know, our, the human race itself is screwed. I mean, civilization in the, in the short term. And, and how one of the ways to change this is, is to view everything as basically a living system, including our economy. And you used to teach economics at Harvard, as I recall. Well, I taught business. Yeah, business. business okay. management. You know, it's quite different, actually. Okay, <laughs> but, you know, close enough. Particularly but, back then. <laughs> yeah. But, but the point is, you know, changing our understanding yeah. of our business systems and, and you know, in, increasing the primacy of labor and, and going to things like, you know, worker-owned co-ops. Um, how do we bring this into the political sphere? I mean, this is a conversation that seems to be, even on the Democratic side right now, you got Jay Inslee out there saying, climate change, climate change, climate mm -hmm. change, and nobody else is integrating that into all these other issues. Well, I think one of the things we need to realize is that the solution is not going to come from within the political system and from among the political candidates. 
Now, there's uh, there's no doubt in my mind that we you know we need to achieve really deep change in this election, but we also have to recognize that we have a tendency to say, well, if we just elect the right person president, that will take care of it. Yeah, the salvationist thinking: somebody's going to save us. We just exactly. need a political equivalent of Jesus. Yeah, exactly. And the very nature of the future that we need to achieve is one of deep engagement um, in the life of community, self-organizing communities of people that are living together and uh, concerned about the health of their soils and the health of their community and is everybody taken care of and how but there's, do we... there, But there's two pieces, and we have a little less than a minute. Yeah. There's two pieces to this. One is the awakening and the second is the policy making. Yes. So let's assume a certain level of awakening. What's the first piece of legislation that you would want to pass to, to bring about this change? I think the first one would be to change our indicators. Um, do away with GDP and start looking at do, what? At indicators of well-being and happiness. Um, now, happiness is not ha-ha or, uh, you know, joy-joy, yeah. but um, going back to the, to the founding of the... Yeah. Um, happiness is one of the one of the goals. It's a great, great You know, I, I I grew up in Michigan, and there were two papers: the Detroit Free Press, the Detroit News. One was the labor paper, and the other was the business paper. The labor paper every day on its labor section mm -hmm. had the average wage in Michigan. Perfect. Like, literally every day, you could see yeah. what the average wage in Michigan was. That was their indicator. David, thank you so much for dropping by. Thank you. Brilliant. Great talking with you, David Corton. DavidCorton.org is the website.